Well, praise the Lord, church. It's great to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Uh, we're going to go ahead and begin our service with prayer, if everybody would like to stand. We've got a few requests here. Brother Ricky Butler, uh, Larry Thrasher, David Westmoreland, uh, Hurricane Ida Victim, Larry Hughes, Betty Gilmore, Daniel Threadgill and family, the Epley family, and Revival that's coming up, and Sister Summer, she's not feeling well. Let's remember her as well. Let's pray, church. Lord, I pray in this moment that you would meet every need that is that is known here and that is not known, Lord. Every person that is on the prayer list, God, I pray you'd move for them, Jesus. I pray that you would just begin to move for the revival that's coming to this church, God. And I pray your anointing would begin to just pour out in this church in this very moment. God, I pray that you would show your miraculous power throughout the length of this service. For every need that is here, for every prayer and hand that is lifted, God, I pray you'd meet them halfway. God, I pray you'd just show your power to someone here tonight. The Lord will give you the praise and honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We're going to have a congregational now, if uh, Brother Gene would like to come. We're going to sing happy birthday to Brother Bray, 90 years old. Keith, we'll do a duet on that if you want to. <laughs> Everybody sing to Brother Bray, 90 years old. Sing loud. you many more. I hope you get 90 more, brother. <laughs> All right, let's do I'm Going That Way.
show you how two great minds work together. Maybe it was the Lord. Maybe it's just uh, two great minds working together. I don't know. But anyway, I came up and told brother, uh, what's that guy's name up there? Yeah, okay. I told him, I said, I want to do work that I go but to the Lord. He said, I've already got it in there. I put it in there before you got here. So it must be a God thing. That's all I know. Great job, Brother Gene. If the worship team could be making their way. You know, while I was at work today, I had a thought come to my mind, and it had me excited, but I didn't know I was leading service, so I know that I'm supposed to share it because it's been on my mind all day. I seen an article on Facebook while I was on break, and it was kind of interesting. It said that a bottle of water at Walmart in a pack normally averages around 50 cents per bottle, but that same water bottle in a vending machine is normally $1.52. That same water bottle at a ballpark is anywhere from $2 to $4. It's the same product, a different place. Well, I want to read something tonight to you. And it's Romans chapter 8. There there is, no full, na, there, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do... And that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful 
of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Well, God wanted me to remind somebody tonight that we're in the most invaluable, most valuable place in the world, and it costs us nothing. So tonight, instead of us sitting there thinking about our checkbook and what it's going to cost us, why don't we think about the deliverer and what he can give us? Let's praise with the worship team.
Bible says it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Aren't you thankful for the joy of the Lord? Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. That means when we are feeling weak, when we have that joy down inside of us that keeps us moving and going forward. And there's another way that you can get joy if you're not feeling much tonight. The Bible says to leap for joy. So there's a recipe to get joy if you don't have it tonight. I wonder if we can just leap a little bit tonight. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this room. Come on, let's clap our hands unto the Lord right now. God is here. He's here for somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So glad that you chose to be in church here on a Wednesday night. Why don't you get yourself a hand clap for coming to the house of the Lord? Many chose not to come, but for those who chose to come, I believe God will bless you for it. We do have some guests that are here with us tonight. Good to see Sister Angel here with us. Brother Ben's mother's here with us as well. If there's any other guests, we're so glad that you're here tonight. And I hope that you receive something uh, from the Lord. And as we did say earlier, it is Brother Bray's 90th birthday. Wow. I told him, I said, I want you to make it to 100 when I was talking to him on the phone this morning. And I believe that he can make it. He just keeps on keeping on. He's one of our greatest Bible readers that we have here in this church at 90 years old. Why don't we just give him one more hand clap. We appreciate you so much, Brother Bray. And because we appreciate you so much, after church, we're going to have some cake and some ice cream downstairs to celebrate your birthday. So if you came and you don't get anything else tonight, you can at least get some ice cream and some cake. Um, and we're going to celebrate him. You know, it's not often that we turn 90 years old every day. And uh, if you're jealous, when you get 90 years old, we'll have you ice cream and cake as well. I'm, I'm glad we get to celebrate him tonight. Uh, I want to be uh, preaching uh, tonight out of the book of Proverbs. be my launching point. Proverbs chapter 27, uh, beginning with verse 7. And what I hope to convey and what I... Uh, hope to establish here tonight is uh, for us to find a hunger, for us to find something inside of us that will push us for greater. Because I want to be honest with this church and I believe that God has greater for us. I just don't say that because I'm the pastor of this church, but I believe that. I believe He's got greater for us individually. But what it takes to accomplish greater is a hunger 
inside of you that nobody else has. You see, you read about many people, you read about how great that they are. The reason those people were so great in the Bible is because they did things that other people did not. Because everybody has that source, everybody has that ability to be great, but not everybody is willing to walk the road for greatness. Proverbs 27 verse 7 says, The full soul loatheth and honeycomb, but to the hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet. Tonight I just want to preach with the title, A Desire for More. A Desire for More. If you want more tonight, I wish you'd pray with me. I wish you'd ask God to speak with you, put a hunger inside of you tonight. Lord, we lift up the only saving name, the mighty matchless name of Jesus in this room tonight. And I pray you'd go forth as the mighty God which you are and that you'd speak into the hearts of this church, that you would kindle a fire within our bones, God, that would push us to greatness, that would push us to be the people, the women and men of God that we were called to be. Lord, we'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. I do not plan on being very long tonight as we are going to uh, try to hurry and get downstairs. Brother Bray, he lives a little bit far off, so we're going to go ahead and go down there and celebrate him. Uh, If you will uh, listen with me here, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, what I just read, that the full soul loatheth and honeycomb. It despises it. It does not want a honeycomb. If you know about a honeycomb, it's sweet and it's tasteful uh, to the mouth and to the tongue. But the Bible says when the soul is full, you don't want it. I know many of you like to eat like I do. And sometimes you feel so hungry that you think, man, I could eat a horse. Or I could just eat it. I, I want to eat so much of this food. And then you get to that point where you're so full. Even something so delicious, the finest steak in the world. If it was set before you, you would not be able to eat it. Why? Because you have reached your capacity. And you've reached your capacity so much that it'll also it'll always make you sick to even think about, man, I, I couldn't even think about eating that right now. I'm so full. And so the Bible's trying to convey to us here, Solomon's trying to convey to us that when a soul is full, even a piece of honeycomb, as sweet and as tender as it is, the full soul does not want it. It hates it. But it says, to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. To a soul that is hungry, even things that don't taste good still taste good because you're hungry enough. Even things that don't really feel good when it's going down your throat, still it's adequate enough at that time because you're hungry enough. And I want to preach to us tonight and make us understand some things that if we want to get anywhere that we need to be in God, it's going to take us uh, uh, eating some things that are bitter to us right now. It's going to take us doing some things that are bitter to us right now. We should not be a church of full souls. I need you to hear me tonight. We should not be a church with full souls. If we have reached our full capacity, we have completely missed it. If we think that we've got it made here right now and we're doing exactly what we should be doing, we have missed it. But it's going to take us going through some bitter things to get to where God wants us to be. We cannot be a satisfied church if we're going to grow to the capacity that God wants us to grow. If we're going to grow internally as God wants us to grow, we got to be a hungry soul. I wonder if there's anybody here tonight that says, I'm hungry for a move of God. I'm hungry for something else in my life. I don't feel like this is it. I don't feel like I've accomplished it yet. I'm hungry for more. 
The reason I've come to preach this tonight is because I believe we've got some mighty, mighty people that's sitting on our church pews. And I don't want you to just be stagnant and complacent where you are. But hear me in the Holy Ghost tonight. I want to tell you that if you'll push for the things of God, he's got some things for you that you cannot even imagine, you cannot even fathom. But if you'll get hungry, God's there and he wants to pour it in to you. Not everybody's going to be hungry. Not everybody tonight is going to receive this word. But if I can just get one hungry saint to say I'm going to push everything else out of the way. I don't care what everybody else is doing. I'm hungry for a move of God in my life. I come to preach to a preacher that's just satisfied with preaching. I come to preach to a saint who's just satisfied with sitting on a pew. I come to uh, talk to a teacher who's just satisfied with teaching and tell you God's got more for you than you can imagine. But you got to get hungry. You got to get hungry for the things of God. It's not enough for us just to be saved. But God has a different realm for us if we will let him push us into that place. And that's what it's going to take. It's going to take some pushing, some pressing, some striving to get there. The book of Mark chapter 9 verse 28. The Bible says, and when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast him out? I need you to understand something tonight. The Bible tells us, and I've read this, that the disciples, God had given them power to cast out devils. He'd given them power to lay hands on the sick so they could recover. But they came to a certain person which had a devil that they could not cast out. They had a, this person was foaming and this devil was throwing this person all different directions. And they had to come get Jesus and said, Jesus, uh, your disciples can't cast him out. He said, oh, you faithless generation, you perverse generation. Why do you have little faith? But then after Jesus had cast out this devil, they come to him and they said, why could we not cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing. By nothing, but by prayer and fasting. I'm not understanding something. The Bible says he gave them power to cast out devils. He had given them the power. But we got to add some stuff to the power if we're going to reach into the things that Jesus done. I need somebody to hear me. He said, this kind cometh out by nothing but prayer and by fasting. I'm going to tell this church, if we'll get hungry for prayer and if we'll get hungry for fasting, there ain't a devil in hell that can come into this place and laugh in our face and tell us that we can't cast him out. We'll have the same power that Jesus had. God shall withhold nothing from us, I believe. No good thing if we'll get a hunger for prayer and fasting. Oh, but prayer and fasting, those are bitter things to talk about. Those are harmful to the body. My, who does not want to go without food? I sure don't. Who doesn't want to go without our caffeinated drinks? I sure don't. Who doesn't want to go without water? I sure don't. But do you want more? Are you hungry for more? I want to ask somebody, how bad do you want to be used by God? How bad do you want to see the supernatural? Do you want it enough to push the plate away? Do you want it enough to dedicate an hour of day to prayer? Do you want to see God move in your life as you have dreamed about so many times. Have you read about in this word? It's just not enough to read about it. But we got to find the recipe. We got to find the recipe for the supernatural. We've got to do what God has called us to do. But it's going to take us giving up some things. It's going to take us going through some things. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 19, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? He just told him, he said, Obey the commandments. 
This is enough for you to inherit eternal life. I'm not telling you that you've got to get into heaven by praying and fasting. Not saying that you have to pray and to fast like the disciples did to get into heaven. He told this man, obey the commandments. But he said, I've already done these things. And he said, all these things have I kept from my youth. What lack I yet? Now listen to what he says to him. Jesus said, if thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. The greatest invitation that he could ever have, if you want to be perfect, if you want to come and follow me, I'm only asking you to do one thing and that's to sell all that you have and give it to the poor. He asked him one of the hardest things that he's ever asked a man that had a lot of riches. Just give everything you got to the poor and you'll be perfect and come follow me. But the young men heard that saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. Let me ask you, are you willing to give up what you love most to come and to truly follow Jesus? Are you willing to give up what you desire and what you love so much down in this world to be used in a mighty way? Or will you be as this young man and say, Jesus, I'll just stick to listening to the commandments. I'll just stick to obeying the commandments. I'll just stick to obeying the Bible. But Jesus said, I've got greater for you. But you got to be willing to give up some things. I come to tell us if we want to get anywhere with God, we're going to have to be willing to give up some things. we got to be willing to give up some things that are holding us back from stepping into the dimension that God has for us. How are we going to know those things that we need to give up? Be like this man. Just ask God, how can I be used by you? The reason some of us have not accomplished what God has for us so far is we're too busy doing the things that we love in the midst of the week and we, because we love those things so much and because they're close, so close to our heart that is preventing us from doing the will that God has for us. Is it TV? Give it up. Is it a video game? Give it up. Is it a certain hobby? Give it up. You can keep doing it all you want to. But I want to ask you, do you want to be used by God? Do you want to be used by God? Do you want your name written in that Lamb's book of life? Do you want to have a legacy that when you die and you're laying in that casket, they're able to say he did everything that he knew to do. He served God with everything inside of him. What we've been used to is not full surrender. We've been used to partial surrender. Because some of us know God wants us to lay some things down and we're still holding on to them. You wonder why you're stagnant. You wonder why you're going through hell and high water. It's because you're still holding on to things that the devil has placed in your life and he couldn't even place them in your life it could just be something that your flesh desires but when we get rid of those things it's going to open up an avenue for us to walk in the spirit of God Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 9 verse 23 and he said to them all if any man will come after me Let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. What's the first step? You got to deny yourself. You got to deny what you want. You got to deny what feels good to you. You got to deny what tastes good to you. And the second step is you got to take up his cross. You got to take up his bearings. And the Bible says you got to do it daily. We're not just carrying a cross on Sunday. We're just not carrying a cross on Wednesday. But God's called us to carry his cross daily and to follow him. 
Listen, I'm going to tell you tonight, if you want to be used mightily by God, you're going to have to serve him daily. You're going to have to die out to your flesh daily. You're going to have to sacrifice daily. You're going to have to read the word of God daily. You're going to have to pray daily. Daily. You're going to have to seek his face for your life daily because when we have a day-to-day -day relationship with God, we can't help but walk down the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He said in the book of Luke chapter 18 verse 29, and he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or parents, or brethren, or wife, or children, for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time, and in the world to come life everlasting. God is telling us here, Jesus is speaking here, and he's telling you, he's not going to ask you to leave anything that he does not have something greater for you. He said you can leave your wife, you can leave your husband, you can leave your family, but if it's for the kingdom of God's sake, if it's what you feel like I've got for you, there are going, you're going to receive manifold more. Not just in heaven. Listen to what he says. He says you're going to receive manifold more in this present time. Don't tell me there ain't no reward for doing work for the kingdom of God. He said you shall receive manifold more, manifold more in this present time. No, you may not be the richest person. No, you may not be the wealthiest person. But when you get the spirit of God really living inside of you, you can tap into things that will bring manifold more blessings in this present time. Do you want the blessings of God on your life? You're going to have to leave behind some things. You're going to have to throw away some things. You're going to have to throw away some movies. You're going to have to throw away some magazines. you going to have to quit visiting some websites. You're going to have to quit playing some of these violent games. Ah, come on, you need to hear me tonight. Uh, we got to throw away some things. Uh, we got to throw away some carnal things, uh, some fleshly things, uh, so we're able to walk in the Spirit. We're, 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 listen to me. We're, we're walking in the Spirit when we walk into the church on Sunday morning. We're walking into the Spirit when we go to the restaurant after church. But when we walk into our house, we're walking into a house of carnality. And so that fleshliness starts to rise up and that Spirit starts to diminish. Listen to me in the Holy Ghost tonight. If you think you need to throw some things away, you better throw them away. If you think you need to cut some things off, you need to cut them off. If you need to throw away some friends, you you need to throw them away. If they're hindering you from getting you to where God wants you to be, it's time to cut them off. I know that's not popular, but let me pastor just a little bit tonight. If we're going to produce fruit as God has called us to produce fruit, we cannot have a bunch of evil trees sitting on the church pew. Bible says there's two different kind of trees. There's an evil one and there's a good one. I want us to have a church of good fruit. I want us to have a church of, of good trees. You say, well, you're judging me by telling me I'm an evil tree. No, the Bible says that you shall know a tree by the fruit it bears. I'm not judging you. I'm judging your fruit. And because I've seen your fruit, I know what kind of tree you are. Oh, I know that's not popular. It's harsh. You didn't expect that on a Sunday night. I mean, on a Wednesday night. You came for the ice cream and cake. I've got it for you. But right now, we got to get in some rough stuff here. Bible says, book of Jeremiah. This is a prayer I've been praying to God this week particularly. Bible says, and the word of the Lord came unto me. This is Jeremiah saying, before I formed thee, in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. I need you to think with me just for a little bit tonight. What has God ordained you to be? What has God sanctified you to be? What has God selected you to be? 
And are you currently that person today? I've been praying this week to God and I've been asking him, I want me to be the man that you've seen me as what you've wanted me to be before I was even born. And by me praying that prayer, I have asked God, I want you to burn out everything inside of me. I want you to kill everything inside of me. I want you to put things inside of me that need to be there. So I'm able to fulfill your purpose, your full purpose for your life. We've got a bunch of people in, in this day and era that are living their half purpose. They're getting to their salvation and they're stopping there. What we need to be doing as a church is asking God, what have you created me to be? And am I that person right now? And God, if I am not, would you show me who I'm supposed to be? Would you put something in me that would make me who I am supposed to be? You're wondering... What's your purpose tonight? How do you find your calling? How do you find your gifting? How do you find out who I'm supposed to be? The Bible just simply tells us to ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find and knock and it shall be opened unto you. I remember when I was just had been in church, I accepted my call to preach March the 18th, uh, 2015. I remember it. I felt God kind of tugging on me for something, but I wanted to be super sure about my calling. And I'll tell you, there's different ways that God will show us our calling, but the one thing that we have to do is seek after it and ask Him what it is. It doesn't matter how He shows us, but it matters how we ask. And so I remember somebody had sent me a Bible verse and said, I feel like God wanted me to send you this verse today. I started reading down that chapter. And in the, it was the verse that started to say, talking about the foolishness of preaching and how shall you preach unless you have been sent. And I probably had read that verse so many times, but when I read that verse, something just hit me. I said, I've called you to preach. And I'll tell you a funny story. My cousin, his dad's a preacher. And I don't think he really wanted to be a preacher when he was younger. He wouldn't mind me saying this. But he told God, he said, look, a dog's going to have to talk to me if you want me to preach. I mean, I, I, I'm going to have to see something crazy happen if you want me to preach. Well, he said one night he was laying there in his bed. And he said his dog come right to his window and just barked and barked and barked and barked. And all of a sudden he started to feel a burning inside of him. And that dog, that God, see, God has a sense of humor. He had that God, he had that dog talking to him, and he accepted his call to preach. I want to tell you, I feel, and it's not just because you're my saints, but I feel there's some people in here that has so much untapped potential that you have not tapped into yet. But if you'll just seek the face of God, he's got something greater for you. Desmond, I feel the Holy Ghost. God's been dealing with me this week about you. And he wants me to tell you if you continue to seek him, he's going to reveal to you what he wants you to be. He's got a great anointing that he's placed upon your life. Do you believe it tonight? Let's clap our hands right now if you believe that word. But God's got an anointing for everybody. And if you'll seek after him, if you'll ask him what he wants you to be, he has something great on the horizon for you. But how bad do you want it? The Bible says that Hannah, she wanted a child so bad. The Bible says that the adversary provoked her. You can't have a child. You're barren. You can never produce. But the Bible says that she went up to the temple. Oh, and she started to pour her heart out before God. Say, God, I want a child. I want a child. I'm tired of being tormented. I'm tired of people telling me I ain't got no purpose. I'm tired of people telling me that God ain't got no plan for me. I don't want to get up from here until I know that you have given me an answer. Well, the priest came by, Eli, 
and he thought she was drunk because she was just praying and wailing to such an extent as a drunken woman. And he asked her, are you drunk? She said, no, I'm just craving a child. But during her midst of craving, she made God a promise. She made him a vow. And she said, what you give me, if you'll give me a son, I will give him back to you. The Bible says that Eli told her, this is going to be requested for you. And she got pregnant with a son and called his name Samuel. The Bible says that she winged him. She let him grow for a certain amount of time. But then there came a time where she had to give back what God had given her. Let me tell you something tonight. Are you willing to fully sacrifice what God has the ability to give you? Are you willing enough to tell him tonight, God, if you'll put that anointing on me tonight, I'll serve you for the rest of my days. If you'll put that calling on my life tonight, I'll sacrifice everything to be used by you. Can I tell you, because of a mama's vow to sacrifice her promise, this became one of the greatest men that ever walked in the Bible. Not a word he said ever returned void. It never fell to the ground. Everything was accomplished because a woman says, I'm willing to sacrifice this so God can use him. God is wanting to use you tonight if you will allow him. I just want to know how hungry are you? If you're not hungry, he ain't got nothing for you. But if you're hungry and thirsty, he's got some food and some water to give you that man cannot give you. But it's going to be something from heaven that sticks inside of you and allows you to be who he has called you to be. Callings for a preacher can go forth. Callings for a teacher can go forth. God can place an anointing upon you tonight if you will just allow him to. Do you have a desire for more tonight? Or are you just content where you are? Are you content with how the church is today? Are you content with how the church is on Sunday? Are you content with how the church is on Easter? Are you content with just having these pews filled? Are you content with just going home on Sunday and coming back on Wednesday and keep living your same life and same routine? Or are you something rising up into you now? Have you been asking God, God, I know you've got something more for me. I don't know what it is quite yet, but I feel something stirring up in me. God, and if you'll just tell me, I'll go. If you'll just speak a word into my ear, I'll listen. If you'll just let me see it, I'll follow it. God, anything, whatever you have for me, that's what I want tonight. I've got a desire for more. Oh, there was a time. Now listen, I need you to understand something. That there was not just 12 disciples in the Bible. During the time of Jesus. The Bible says that he had more that he sent out two by two. To go and preach in cities where he was going to gather. But there came a time when Jesus was telling them. He said, I am the bread and I am the water. I am everlasting life. And he began to expound upon these things. And listen to what the Bible says. It said many of those disciples left him. Many of those disciples walked away. You know who was remaining? Those 12. They asked him, are you not going to leave me as well? They said, well, I don't know why we leave you. You're the only one with the words to everlasting life. You're the only one with the keys to the kingdom. Why would we leave you? Oh, I've come to tell you that some people are going to leave when it gets hard. Some people are going to leave when it gets tough. But I believe I got some disciples in this house tonight that says, God, I'm going to follow you to the end. I'm going to follow you down the path that you have for me. 
We don't hear about those other disciples. We don't see their names written anywhere. But the Bible says, Jesus told them, he said, because you've been with me in my temptations, you're going to sit on 12 thrones in heaven with your names written there. Do you want your name in heaven? you got to be willing to follow him to the end. you got to be willing to do what he has called you to do. Go farther this week tonight, God. Let giftings pour out tonight, oh God. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost flow in this room tonight. Let hearts be expanded and enlarged. Let minds be expanded and enlarged, God. Do thy will in this place this morning. Oh, yes, God. Bless God. Yes, God. Oh, I believe he's got a call. For somebody here tonight, how bad do you want it? Stand to your feet. Uh, if you want to be used by God, I wish you'd come down to this altar tonight. If you believe God's got more for you, I wish you'd come down here and pour out your heart to God like Hannah did and say, God, if you'll just give me a calling, I'll give it back to you. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want the supernatural? How bad do you want to be used by God?